So the new economy, um, what's it going to look like? How can we solve problems big and small? You know, like how do we solve all these kind of like individual issues, big structural issues, jobs, tech, education, sustainable models? I mean, it all seems a bit like it seems so. It it seems like such a big problem to solve. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a big problem, and I don't think a single one single policy is able to solve all of, all of these issues all at once. I mean, there needs to be a mindset shift, almost. You know. You, Governments have to be prepared to take the necessary measures when these are the things that, under normal circumstances, you don't normally think about. Because uh, for whatever reason, it may mean that you get downgraded in terms of your credit ratings and so on and so forth. Because we've been taught for a long time that borrowing is bad for an economy. But at times like this, can you afford not to borrow? Yeah, I mean, like we just have to look at what's happened in, let's say, the past. 70 years, right? Like, um, after World War II, there was the birth of the welfare state in Europe and um, the Grand Post-Colonial Project in the Global South, you know, and that kind of like brought along a lot of positive development, but also as the world globalized, uh, we saw the birth of neoliberalization um, and the financialization um, that happened in the 90s. And after the 2008 financial crisis, um, we've had about a decade to kind of like try to work at something that could sort of provide solutions for a lot more people, but I don't think that's really happened. So now, as the world tries to deal with COVID-19 and the aftershock, um, is this a chance for us to actually try to make something new? I think it's really just them trying to find a way out. You know, we have exhausted, I think, the, the usual policy toolkit. So the things that have worked in the past, the things that we usually rely on, are no longer giving the same uh, measure, the same amount of success. You know, how, how much further can you cut interest rates to stimulate borrowing, to stimulate spending? Especially when in some places, interest rates are already at a negative rate. Yeah. Know, where, you, you're, you, where the banks or sort of like um, lenders are paying you to, to borrow rather than the other way around. I think there is a bit of hope in the air. You know, I, I feel that, you know, like, what we're doing is just trying to look for some of these answers through just trying to think about what's been missing over the past few years at least. Um, I mean, to borrow a line from Thatcher, maybe there could be an alternative. Um, and that's what I, I'm hopeful for. Like, neoliberalism has shown that it's got a lot of flaws. And I think if we stick to that model going forward, I don't think it will serve the people that need it the most.